Hi guys, this is the original Josh, and here today we're going to go over the process of installing a new Krenzley pump onto a Honda engine. In this particular case, we've got a GX160, and we're going to install an APG 18 millimeter pump. We're essentially building an H200, one of the littlest brothers of the Dirt Killer Classic series of machines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the parts real quick and then we're gonna break down step by step how to build the pump onto the engine. Now the reason we're doing this video is that when our customers order a replacement pump for their Dirt Killer pressure washer or their Krenzla pressure washer, they're not always expecting to get the pump in pieces like so. The impression is that you're gonna get a pump that's already a sealed housing that you can just slide on the engine. That is the case with direct drive pressure washers in particular, but for our gear drive pressure washer, this one unfortunately takes a little extra skill, but we're gonna make it real easy. So let's take a look at the parts. So first we have our transmission housing. The transmission housing comes with the oil seal already installed as well as the oil drain plug. It'll slide on the engine shaft and then bolt directly to the crankcase cover. You want to make sure that this has got a little smear of lubricant on it. Right now it's got a little bit left over from the shipping. So we can just smear this around and it'll be good when we slide it on. Next you have the cover for the oil housing. This is an expansion chamber for the oil that's inside in case while it's running it does tend to slot, uh, foam up a little bit. So this prevents it from over pressurizing the housing. Gives it a little place for the dipstick to go down so you can check it. Speaking of the dipstick, you'll have a bag that includes the gasket for the oil housing cover as well as your dipstick assembly. Now the Germans use the same dipstick assembly for several different models of pumps. So in some instances you might notice that it looks like it's been cut off at the end. That, that would have been from a dipstick from a AQ pump for the APG series. They trim this little piece off. Then also in the bag we have our four bolts to hold the housing on. So that concludes that bag. Next we have our wobble plate and bearing assembly. It'll all come in one bag. It'll be situated like so. The uh, gas powered units have bearing sets on both sides of the wobble plate because of the higher pressure rating and the amount of heat from the engine. So. If you get in a, a replacement pump for an electric machine, it will likely not have those rear bearing assembly. And in some cases with the AQ pumps, the electric pump kit comes with them, but they are not needed for the assembly. Now from our wobble plate, we have our face plate for our transmission housing. And as you can see, it already includes the three plungers, which are going to press right up against the wobble plate when it's running. The oil seals are installed, as well as get the O-ring around the exterior. So this is ready once you get the transmission housing on and your wobble plate in, you can bolt it straight up. Followed by the bag with your intermediate support rings. This component right here is installed around each one of the plungers and then that presses up against the oil seal and against the packings in the valve housing keeping them both tightly in their place. Then we have the star of the show, big heavy brass valve housing. When you take the valve housing out of the bag, make sure that the back rings have not fallen out of the packing assembly. You wanna make sure that all the parts look uniform and there's usually a little bit of Vaseline or lubricant still on those seals so they're ready to uh, install. Then we have a bag with the hardware to hold the valve housing and face plate on. And last, our bolts for holding the transmission housing onto the engine. All right, so first we start with the transmission housing. We've already greased up the seal as well as the shaft. So we're just gonna slide this on. And we've also put a drop of semi-permanent Loctite in each one of the bolt holes on the crankcase. Get it on and lined up. Then take and run in your bolts by hand. 
so that you don't cross thread the bolt holes in the crankcase cover. I find that using the electric impact gun to drive in these screws certainly makes it faster, but it's more likely to lead to mistakes, so we try to avoid it. Now as I'm tightening them up, I'm making sure that the housing is pulling in evenly, and when the bolts are tightened down all the way, they should be flush so that the bearing set will sit into the back of the transmission housing and not rub against the bolt heads. Everything's in there and lined up. You can certainly hit it with an impact gun if you'd like to and you know that you have the finesse to do so. I'm gonna use a ratchet. Uh, some people prefer to use a torque wrench so that they can get it to a proper torque spec. We do have the torque specs and are, they're available on our, online. I tighten this up just till they're snug. I believe the torque spec is approximately 225 inch pounds. And for this pump, you can do about the same for both the bolts on the trans housing to the engine, as well as the face plate and the valve housing. Next for the bearing set, you can see we have two identical bearing sets and the wobble plate. I'm gonna take some, a little bit of Vaseline and put it on the bearing to get it to stick to the rear of the housing so it doesn't fall while we're putting the rest of it together. I'm also gonna take and put some on the bearing to get it to do the same thing, followed by the rear thrust washer. I'm just going to sit that up against the bearings. Now I'm going to line up my key of the wobble plate and slide it on the motor shaft. Now it hasn't slid all the way back because the thrust washer is dropped down, so we'll raise it up with the flat head screwdriver and push it the rest of the way in. When it's all the way seated, the motor shaft should be almost flush with this inner diameter surface of the wobble plate. The keyway should basically sit right there at the edge of the motor shaft. If you put this in where the high side is on the bottom and the key is on the bottom, you can then just put your rear bearing washer, bearing, and thrust washer in, and everything will stay in place. Next, we're gonna install the faceplate with the plungers. You could, if you wanted to, install the oil housing cover now with the dipstick. However, when you are putting the pump together, we find it easiest to fill the transmission housing to the proper level when the housing cover is not on yet. So we're gonna save that step to last. So now we're going to start with the face plate with the plungers. You need four M8 bolts to hold the face plate onto the oil housing. They do come with Loctite on them already. That said, there's gonna be tension on these springs. So to get this started, we're going to take the other really two bolts from the valve housing, which are the longer M8s, and we're going to slide off the Belleville washers and use that to pull the housing in before we put all four of the standard bolts in. So notice the Germans send them without Loctite. So we line up the housing and thread the longer bolts in place. If you're doing lots of repairs of Krenzler pumps on a regular basis, it's ideal to have an extra set of these lying around uh, various lengths to, for this purpose of different pump sizes. Now I'm going to use a screw gun, but I'm only gonna run it in very cautiously and stop when I feel resistance. Go to the other side and go back and forth like you're putting lug nuts on your car. So now we have a smaller gap of about three quarters of an inch. We can get these other bolts started. And we're just going to get it started on that very first thread and then switch corners. For the sake of not cross threading, check the resistance, make sure that the bolts are going in clean, which they appear to be. Now that we've got about the thickness of the bolt thread actually into the hole, we can take out our other two bolts, set them aside for our valve housing, and we'll get this one started. So now we're going to work our way around, gradually drawing in tension. We're gonna do so making sure that the face plate is pulling in straight to the transmission housing. Don't wanna pinch the O-ring on the face plate. 
and we did install some grease on it too before we slid it on. Right. Final step, we're gonna torque them by hand. And now it's good to go. So now we're gonna install our valve housing, but before we can do that, we'll put in our intermediate support rings. They just slide right on the plungers. In fact, it's one of the most satisfying parts of the build. And when they slide up to the face plate, sometimes they might stop because the plunger might be sl slightly askew, but this is also part of the, the guide that makes sure the plunger goes in and out straight. So you should get them all to seat about the same distance on the APG-18. You've got about 3 16 of a gap between the face plate and the face of the support ring. So once again, we're double checking. We've got all of our backing rings are still installed into the seals. We've already greased up the plunger surface and because our longer bolts do not come with Loctite, we did put some thread lock in those ports and then the other two have thread lock so we'll just be able to drive them in. We just line up the cylinders with the water seals and slide it straight on. It should be able to slide on without having to hammer it. If you have to hammer it, then you should pull it back off, make sure the seals are lined up properly, and retry. As always, start your bolts by hand. I'm gonna run them in with the gun, and then I'm gonna tighten them up with the ratchet. Crisscross the tightening is on this part as well. There they are, snug. Valve housing is installed. So in this step, we're gonna fill it with the Krenzla gear oil and install the oil cover as well as the dipstick. You can see I already put the dipstick in the housing, so once we put our oil in, it'll be ready to go. Once again, we do this this way so it's easier to get in. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna spill it out all over the place. The oil is gonna fill down through here into the transmission housing. This part of the casting is a good guideline for where the fluid level should be. Once again, it's just for lubrication. That's approximately where you should fill it to. And there we have a full transmission housing. Don't forget your gasket. Don't wanna over tighten your gasket either. The housing can sit in either orientation. I think it looks a little nicer this way, but we put a sticker on here for 5W50 synthetic, which is the oil that we traditionally use for the pump. This also lines up the dipstick with that opening in the housing. So once you got your cover on, drop in your bolts. As usual, start them by hand. This one's particularly important to start them by hand because you're going through that rubber gasket. Run them down with the gun, although I recommend doing it with the ratchet. This is just the lazy way. Not anywhere near as snug as the, the bolts for the valve housing. I'm not even sure what the torque value is for these screws, but my guess is that it's somewhere around 50 inch pounds, if that. Now the pump's all together, we'll take a look at how to change the inlet. We've got the pump in installed onto the engine. It's all buttoned up, we've got oil in it. Last steps are to remove the inlet that comes from Krenzla and then to adapt the output to the standard US 3 it's quick disconnect. So we start to get the inlet off and put our inlet strainer on. You need needle nose pliers to pull out the screen assembly that they install in their inlets. Then a 10 millimeter hex wrench to break loose the inlet. This one was much easier than usual to remove, so you may have to make sure you use the right size and bring your muscles. There are two sealing washers inside the port for the inlet, so you wanna remove those as well so they don't interfere with the water flow into the pump. And then we're going to install our inlet assembly. So I've already taped this with some Teflon. We're going to get it started hand tight. Now you can put a number of different types of inlets on the Krenzla pump. This is the one that we like for the majority of our customers that use these for mobile cleaning applications or homeowners especially. But you can also install a variety of other types, just whatever's going to fit into that 3-8 female thread. Snug as a bug in a rug. And we have our dirt killer 
22 millimeter by 3 8 standard adapter. We just thread that on, 22 millimeter connections, seal with our O-ring, no Teflon, no Loctite, no uh, thread sealing. You can put a drop of Loctite on there if you don't want it to vibrate loose, but just as well without. And there you have it. So there it is. We took a GX160 and we installed a brand new Krenzla APG 18 millimeter pump and built a brand new H200. We saw how the pump comes to us in parts in the box and we saw how it all goes together on the engine. You can do it now too. So thank you for joining us with Dirt Killer Pressure Washers. If you want more information, visit us at dirtkiller.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's kill some dirt.